Okay, so now we're going to cover the smallest unit of ionic compounds and the covalent bond, 4.5 and 4.6. What you see in front of you is a crystal lattice of sodium chloride. And the dotted lines are how they're electrostatically attached. That means there's not really a bond there, but their opposite charges att attract each other and hold the um, form. And so we get what's called a crystal lattice. So I'll write that up here. And this crystal lattice is formed and basically becomes a three-dimensional thing. So in your book, there's a prettier version of this than what I'm drawing right here. It's on page 104. And you can see a crystal lattice. Now, many um, things will form different kinds of crystal lattice. This is a simple crystal lattice, and, and that's all we're going to worry about. It's just a simple crystal lattice, and it's a three-dimensional um, look at things. So if I looked at that, it would look more like a cube where I'm having a sodium on one corner and a chlorine on the other corner. So this is three-dimensional, so if you think three-dimensional. Okay, the next part of 4.5 basically has to do with the mole map, and we've already done that with um, mole day, but basically for a quick review, remember to go from mass to moles, you're going to divide by the formula mass of whatever you're trying to get to moles. To go from moles to mass, you're going to times by the formula mass. Now, just a quick review to remember how to do a formula mass. Say that I wanted the formula mass for CH4. Remember that I would take one carbon, which is 12.011, and four hydrogen, so four times hydrogen, which is 1.008, and I would add that up. And that would add up to equal 16.043 grams in one mole. When we add up formula mass, if we remember to do it to five sig figs, or five significant figures, then most often in all calculations that we do, we won't have a problem. So that's what I would put where that starry, or that um, reddish area, that pinkish area, is that goes around and around and around and around up here. That's what I would put there. Okay, now if I want to go from moles to molecules, remember Avogadro and from our mole day, Avogadro's number is what we use, which is the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's how many is in one mole of anything. So then I'm either timesing by that to go from moles to molecules, or I'm dividing by Avogadro's number to go from molecules to moles. Remember that when you divide by this, you need to make sure it's either in parentheses or that you've saved it to alpha A in your calculator so that you can do it real quickly without having to worry about that. I'm not going to go into a lot of this right now because we've already done a whole bunch of conversions with this and it was sort of out of time out of place from where it is in the book. But I, if you have problems with this and you're having problems with the mole map and you should have a copy of the mole map, please come and see me so that you will be able to do that on the test. You will need to go be able to go from to be able to find a formula mass, you're going to be able to have to go from mass to moles and to molecules and back and forth. Okay, so make sure that you know how to do that. Okay, next up is 4.6 where we talk about covalent bonding and you need to remember how to do your Lewis diagrams. You want to be able to draw a bond having looked at a Lewis diagram. So for instance, if I had NH3 as a compound, which is ammonia, and I wanted to draw what it would look like, I would need to know what ammonia or what nitrogen and hydrogen's Lewis diagram was. Now nitrogen has two in the S, and then it has one, two, three in the P. Hydrogen, on the other hand, has one, let me see if I can make that darker, has one in the S. Okay, but we have three of them, so we've got three that have one in the S. So what I do is when I want to put that together, I put my nitrogen in the center, with its five electrons. And then I go grab a hydrogen and pair it up here. 
a hydrogen and pair it up here, and a hydrogen and pair it up here. And this is the shape that I get. Now, this is, um, I like to call it, has one ghost or one unshared pair of electrons. Now, this unshared pair of electrons tends to pull the nitrogen out of the plane. So what we end up seeing is nitrogen with its two electrons and then a hydrogen down here, a hydrogen down here, and a hydrogen down here. That makes a triangle. And they call this trigonal or trigonal, however you want to say it, pyramidal because it does make a pyramid because that unshared pair of electrons will pull that out of the plane. Now the angles here that come between the hydrogens right here, this angle right here is 107, sorry, 107 degrees. So you have been given a paper, and I believe it's on the back of your mole map, that tells you the different shapes that these things will make. So let's do a couple more. Okay, let's look at CH4. We have a carbon, which has one in each of the shells, and we have four hydrogens, and each hydrogen has one electron that it can share. Now, I don't, I don't think I told you on the last um, slide, but on this slide I'm going to tell you, remember that every um, element wants to have eight in its outer shell, that's with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen can only have two in its outer shell because its outer shell is the 1s, which only has the s. So the shell, the one shell only has the s, so it can only hold two. So we want to get carbon to have eight around it. So in order to do that, we start with carbon in the center, and we do our four dots around it, and then we bring in hydrogen, and hydrogen will come here, and here, and I find using colored pencils helps here so I can see where the electrons came from for each of them. So now we have four. Now it looks like it would be flat, but actually it becomes a tetrahedral shape. So I'm going to draw it in model form. So my carbon is black, and then I have a hydrogen that will come straight up from it. So I'll just color that blue. I'm actually going to change that because hydrogen is often known as white, so let's just do it white. And then I'll have one that goes back into the plane here that's white, one that's back into the plane here that's white, and one that comes out of the plane here that's white. So these two went back into the plane and this other one's coming out of the plane. This angle right here is 109.5. Notice this one doesn't have any unshared pairs of electrons, the other one did. And for every unshared pair of electron, we scare it down by 2 degrees. We ignore the 0.5 at that point. This shape here is known as a tetrahedral. Okay, so we've got a tetrahedral. Alright, let's see what else we can do. Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's do, I'm going to just cross this right here so we can use this bottom part. Let's do CO2. So CO2, we've got a carbon, which has our four around it now. And now, instead of being simple here, we've got oxygen. And we've got two oxygens. And each oxygen has six around it. So we've got two oxygens each with six around it. Now both of these are going to want eight around them. So we're going to put carbon in the center. And I'm going to draw it a couple different ways here. So you can see I'm going to put my carbon here. And then I'm going to bring my oxygen in. Now oxygen needs two and carbon needs four. So each of these oxygens needs two so it's going to share two here and it's going to share two here Okay. Now we can replace two electrons that are shared in a bond with a line. So I'm going to do that so it looks a little neater. So carbon is sharing two electrons with one oxygen, and the oxygen has two extra electrons. 
and two electrons with another oxygen that also has two extra electrons. You'll notice that I went off at a triangle angle here because unshared pairs of electrons like to be as far apart from each other as possible and far apart as the bond. So this is the angle we get. This would actually be known as linear because the angle from here to here is 180. That's at 8. Okay. All right, let's look at another one. Here's one everyone knows, H2O. So again, we have our hydrogens, two hydrogens that each have a dot, and we have our oxygen that has six. So this should be fairly easy. We start with oxygen in the center with its six, and we add on to it a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. Now notice this has two unshared pairs of electrons, here and here. Now, the angle that this is right here, because this has two unshared pairs of electrons, remember no unshared pairs of electrons was 109.5, one was 107, this is 105, as far as the degree, and it is known as bent. Okay, it also can be written like this. I always show the unshared pairs of electrons. Okay, so let's do a little really tricky one. N2. So nitrogen has five, and we have two nitrogens that have five. All right, so I'm going to draw it a little different. I'm going to put the nitrogen with this two that are paired on the side and these three that are not paired in the center. I'm going to do that same thing with another nitrogen, two on the outside, one, two, three in the center. Now what happens is these two will pair, and these two will pair, and these two will pair, making a triple bond between. So then I get my nitrogen with a two on the outside, sharing three with another nitrogen with a two unshared. And this, of course, is linear with a triple bond. Okay, hopefully this has given you an idea of how things will work together. Um, let's do about two more and then um, we'll go on to something else. Okay, here we have sulfur trioxide. So sulfur is in oxygen's column, so it's going to have six in its outer shell. And then we have oxygen, which has also six in its outer shell. I'll get this off transparency. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and another oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, another oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to start with our sulfur in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to attach an oxygen. Well, we know one oxygen is going to take two need two electrons. So we're going to put one right there. So that's going to be a double bond with one. Now these other two are going to share both of sulfur's electrons and this is called a coordinate covalent bond. And that is when sulfur gives both electrons for a bond from it. So it's called a coordinate covalent bond. So another oxygen comes here and shares those two. So we can redraw that with the lines, one bond to this oxygen, one bond to this oxygen, and a double bond to this oxygen. Now these angles should be 120. Okay, and this is known, this shape is known as trigonal or trigonal, however you want to say it planar, because it's all going to be in a plane, because there's no unshared electrons on the middle um, element. Okay, so let's try a formaldehyde ion. This is formaldehyde, and we want to know how it goes together. So we've got two hydrogens, each with a single dot. We've got a carbon with four, and we've got an oxygen with six. So we're going to put those together. Start with the carbon in the center. Oxygen wants to share two, so it's going to share two with carbon. 
and then we have a hydrogen that's going to come in here and share up here and one here. Let's replace that with a line diagram. So C, one bond to hydrogen, one bond to hydrogen, and a double bond to oxygen. So that's formaldehyde. Let's do another one. Let's do C2H2. This is ethyne, um, also known as acetylene. Let's take it. We have two carbons, looks like this, and we have two hydrogens with each one. So we're going to deal with the carbons first. So we have a carbon and a carbon. So what's going to happen is we're going to take those inside right here and we're going to triple bond that carbon. And then we're going to add the hydrogens on the outside. That will give each carbon eight electrons around it. So let's redraw it. So it's H is single bonded to a carbon which is triple bonded to another carbon which is single bonded. Now if you look at each carbon, it has a total of eight around each one. Each of those lines represents two dots. Okay, and we'll see you in class. Okay, that's the end of 4.6. We will see you in class. Make sure to write down any questions that you have so that we can get them answered.